Welcome to another episode of Hard Factor, presented by the Barstool News Network. It is Monday, July 20th, 2020. We've got Will, myself, Mark, and the Beave. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I, see, I see you're working on that hair, Beave, and you got the... Um, the was that the shirt that won the contest? Yeah, of- I crowdsourced the first, uh, the pillar of the Beeves look, which is going to be his new shirt. And uh, the crowd picked this one, which is good because it's the only one I fit into. So <laughs> it- <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, you also added some glasses to the Beeves look. I Beeves see. out of contacts. <laughs> so... Uh- yeah, well, you might almost eat, put a perm it, it, on the on the on the beef tail this weekend, but yeah, oh, you, I thought you were going to put how, make it blonde the the, the oh, tail yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. You got shopping took up so much time, but it, it's going to happen, guys. Okay, okay, don't let it, don't gone. rush it. Let it come to the beef. Do you yeah. guys do you guys catch uh, Kanye's first um, uh, campaign event in South Carolina? I saw that he's up to like basically ninety nine cents yes on predict it because he's running, I guess. Uh, he was at like 96 cents. Yes. Last I checked. Yeah. Well, apparently his, uh, his, his opening foray into campaign events was terrible. I saw KFC tweeted something where Kanye was criticizing Harriet Tubman. So, well, didn't um, he, didn't he like shave 2020 in his head? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was wearing a security flak jacket. I saw him like take the stage and it looked, yeah. Okay. All right. Thing is guys, Kanye is really which Kanye you get, depending on whether he took his meds that day or not. So we might have a certain Kanye that's not taking his meds this whole campaign. And I really <laughs> hope for our sake that's the case. Uh, <laughs> we got to get we got to get him on the debate stage. Yeah, with, we're going to get Kanye on the yeah. debate stage. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, I th- I've, I've heard uh, that that's like uh, what Kim is worried about, too, that Kanye is. Uh, not yeah, no, he's, right he's literally a guy that you can't tell him nothing. Uh, he will hear <laughs> none of it. And when he goes off his meds, he's it's a real bizarre scenario where there's no one, even the most well, powerful family and entertainment that can tell him, Jesus, are you on your bipolar medication? And uh, you can't tell him nothing. So nope. uh, strap in for the ride, boys. It's going to start a presidential campaign. Well, since that's not like real news, we're going to have... Tons of actual real news stories today. We got China updates, Brianna Taylor, Russian updates, COVID updates, uh, Portland, Ghislaine Maxwell. Pretty much every single major news story we're hitting in this podcast. And up first, going back to the well with what the hell China is our first segment today. And first off, I wanted to clarify if we're talking about China, Russia, Brazil, etc., anywhere in the world, we're talking about the governments typically, not the people for the most part. You know, people uh, just want to live. Of course, we're not insulting the fucking people. No, right. We're not. Right. So the governments are usually the ones who are fucking around and ruining everything for all the citizens. And that's what we discuss on this show. And nowhere is this more apparent right now than China. Uh, over the weekend, video of the Xinjiang province in northern Ch- China where um, hundreds of Uyghurs, an ethnic minority, uh, are being organized and put into trains at gunpoint by the Chinese government made the rounds on the internet. Some people say that this is an old video. It's drone footage, um, but it made it the rounds again this weekend. Uh, I like didn't. I almost didn't believe it when I saw it this weekend because I was just like, this. This has to be like someone that hates China, and it's got to be fake. I, I didn't believe it when I saw real. it. Real video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, all, been val- it's been validated. Yeah, all real. the Uyghurs, uh, which is the ethnic minority, their heads are shaved, their their eyes are blindfolded, and they're bound, forced to kneel um, on pavement until uh, the train arrives to ship them to wherever they're going to, and then they're you know c- at gunpoint and have to all get into the train and go wherever the hell it goes. Um, yeah, they look like they're just ready to, to to get killed. They look like it's just it's the end. Well, it looks like other. Them- it looks like other ethnic cleansing programs in world history. Uh, Correct. Is what it, it looks, looks like. that bad. It looks yeah. that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so th- then the Chinese ambassador to the UK went on the BBC to try to clear it up in England, uh, saying actually how beautiful the province of uh, Xinjiang is and that the Uyghurs uh, had committed terrorist attacks and were probably prisoners um, and that the the Uyghur people's population had actually doubled in that province uh, in the last 40 years, which seemed to be a problem uh, for this ambassador uh, and his government. And then he had absolutely no response to the reports that the Uyghur population has drastically decreased in the last two to three years in that province since 2017. Yeah, something like 80 percent or something. 
Right. De- decrease of 80%. Yeah, that was awesome. He was like, hey, have you ever been to this province? And the guy was like, no, I haven't. And and he was like, well, it, you know, it's very beautiful. And he goes, but this footage is really not beautiful, Ambassador. And he goes, yeah, that's what I'm saying, is it used to be beautiful until all these terrorist attacks. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, until <laughs> so all these deal with this Muslims in yeah, China. Exactly. <laughs> now, yep. no, don't worry, we're trying to get rid of them. We're yeah, doing we want our to be best beautiful to get- again. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) pretty much exactly. If you go Uh, there, you just got to look past the humans that live there and occupy that space and their ugly faces. And you'll see the vistas in the mountains and eventually. Quite stunning. Quite stunning, really. I'm sure it would be hard to do, but can you imagine if you got on the wrong train? It's just like 10,000 blindfolded guys whimpering. Oh, no. Those are the the ethnic cleansing trains. I'm pretty sure they're only. You don't want to get on those. Yeah. This is so horrible and it shouldn't be happening anymore in 2020. And like the Uyghurs are the people that were using TikTok to communicate because they were completely and totally permitted or prevented from making phone calls. All their communications are monitored. They're essentially just being targeted and cleansed by the Chinese government. This, yeah. Yeah. It's bad. Pat, Pat, uh, you've covered this story on Hard Factor before, but bringing it back, I wanted to remind everybody, the claim from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, uh, they made it, they released a study this March in 2020 that the Chinese government uh, it's not only forcing these Muslim ethnic minorities, Pat, you pointed out the Uyghurs are a, a, a religious minority, they're Muslims, um, to attend re-education camps uh, by the millions, as in like millions of them are carted off in these trains to these re-education camps uh, to learn how to better fit in with China. They're also being shipped all over the country to work as forced labor in Chinese factories for giant global brands, many of them American brands. Yeah, people are uh, losing their children, too. That pe- People's children are going missing, and they're not sure where they went. Uh, yep. And they can't Wayfair. get any answers. Yeah. Well, other uh, than Wayfair. This is a little bit bigger than Wayfair. The report suggests that since 2017, at least 80,000 people have been taken to work in factories as forced labor from the Uyghur population in the, in the Xinjiang province, and that more than a million overall have been taken to the re-education camps that include torture, mandatory sterilizations, and requiring Uyghurs to renounce their Muslim faith. So basically, a genocide Whoa. or an ethnic cleansing. Yeah. Whoa. So uh, what, what do you do about this? Well, you got to deal with China. You got to deal with the companies that are taking advantage of this situation. The movement uh, to deal with the humanitarian atrocity has already begun in the neighboring countries of Tajikistan and Cambodia, where the Uyghurs are fleeing uh, for shelter from the Chinese government. And if our American corporations and government have any conscience at all, Mark, like you're asking, uh, then the cause, that same cause will continue to spread in America, uh, where many of these Uyghur made goods are flowing to. Um, you know, and sadly, there's not that many internet comments because a lot of politicians, companies, and media outlets are shit scared of this the Communist tough, Party man. of China. Because yeah. China's going to China. I mean, we saw what they're doing with Hong Kong. Uh, we buy all their shit. We're completely dependent on their economy. Our economy is. Uh, and China's going to China. I'm not sure what you do here, but we're already in a cold war with these cats. You we're, have to pressure you know, them to end this because it's 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 just totally, utterly wrong. Um, I agree. I agree. Yes. But it's tough. It's tough them to get them to do anything you want them to do. I mean, they well, the are, world needs to figure out how to because they're just committing an ethnic cleansing program. It's yeah. It's it's a it's it's like a fish. It's official. I mean, like. It's happening. Like, it's yeah. been happening. Everyone that's knows what, about it. That's what all these reports allege that since 2017, it has been going on and it's going right. to continue to go on. You uh, can't deny it anymore. Like, it's happening. Right. So Romney, Pelosi, and Howley, those are the three con- congressional voices who are, like, never uh, a team. They're the, they're the three ones who are pushing for Trump to do something. But guess what? Congress can also write bills, too. So somebody in D.C. needs to get their asses you know, a fire lit under it and make something happen, try to help help out the situation. And speaking of D.C., the odds of Trump winning re-election are all the way down to 38 cents on predicted.org slash promo wow. slash hard factor 20. Get your first 20 bucks match so you can bet on that election outcome. So Trump, a huge underdog now. Those are good Biden's odds. Big favorite. Yep. Uh, as well as the VP market where Susan Rice has ascended to be in a comfortable second behind Kamala Harris. So it's like you know, Kamala Harris, God. Susan Rice basically is I'm like. I'm so mad. We did, we yeah. were on we were on Demings and then we were on Bottoms when she got to the surge. And now like Rice was at like one or two cents during that time. Yeah. Now she's 
She's 20, 22x what she was. People, you, people keep just, uh, you know, kind of going but, up and going down in that market. The only mainstay has been Harris. So. Right. But had we bought as many, like, I was buy I bought like 5,000 shares of uh, bottoms at like five cents. It's like rice, you really could have gotten. Uh, rice would have been like, it would have been like a year's salary had I just picked rice. <laughs> well, <laughs> just you live, you learn, man. Whoops. Don't put it that yeah. way. Don't don't All talk right. about the past just of gambling. Just saying, yeah. What do we? Just let's go watch Back to the Future, and where Biff has that just almanac. Saying, it's we were not close. worth it. We were close. The almanac would be good. Again, Boy, that's predicted. Dot <sighs> org slash promo slash hard factor twenty. Get your first twenty bucks match on us. Sorry, it took a long time for that. First All right, guys. Yeah, that was a fun one. Well, got a COVID update for you to keep the fun rolling. Let's keep your Monday going with some COVID updates. Nothing like a good Monday morning COVID update. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to love it. Yeah. Every Monday. Still a thing and it still sucks. Uh, Update over. That's it. No, cool. we actually do the like one of these that a day at this point. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Which means I can get um, back out to the club soon. No, it's still a thing that sucks. All right, fine. I'll give you a couple things that happened over the weekend with COVID-19. A doctor in Tel Aviv, Israel, has tested positive twice now for the coronavirus. There's been a lot of, like, miss or conflicting information around antibodies. How long do they work? Can you get uh, coronavirus twice? A lot of the people that have tested positive twice, and I'm doing air quotes, uh, were theorized to have just still had traces from the first round of coronavirus still in their system. So there were like very few or, or no uh, cases that were proven to be a second round of coronavirus. Uh, enter doctor from Israel who she will, she's anonymous. She got coronavirus early on um, treating patients at Ramat Gan Sheba, uh, Sheba Medical Center, the largest hospital in Israel. She was fighting the coronavirus since all the way back in uh, March, I think. And she got, or before, but she got sick in April, tested positive in April. Then she recovered. And for the mm. months of May and June in their entirety, she was testing negative. So this isn't confused as the first round. And then in July, just last week, she got positive again. So this there would be go. an official, official, you can catch it again. What everybody so not, knew, not but it's just official. I mean, is that yeah, a, I mean, yeah, I feel like yeah. we need to be putting more effort into studying this and we're not for some reason. Well, it's I mean, she again is a doctor. She's facing the coronavirus every day. So it's not like a typical scenario, but it's not good. Antibodies don't last that it long. It lasts like about a, two months is what I yeah. had seen in a Chilean uh, report. That, they, that math checks out with this doctor. Uh, that's so months. upsetting. That's so upsetting. Yeah, it's the worst fucking news. So uh, what else? Let's take it to the internet. Uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mayor of Atlanta, says, in addition to being sued over a mask mandate and voluntary advisory guidelines on COVID-19, at Governor Kemp has asked for an emergency injunction to restrain me from issuing press statements and speaking to the press. Uh, far more have sacrificed too much for me to be silent. So Bottoms is like trying to tell everyone to wear masks. Governor Kemp, the governor of the entire state of Georgia, Mayor Bottoms is the mayor of the city of uh, the capital of Georgia, uh, Atlanta. Uh, she's trying to get people to wear masks and Governor Kemp's saying, hey, we're not gonna make people wear masks. He's saying, I have more power than the mayors and I'm gonna uh, file, ish he issued a, a declaratory judgment on her with the courts. So the, co <laughs> the governor's kind of suing uh, the mayor of his capital city. So it sounds like that they got sense. their ducks in a row. What is up Georgia. with this? Uh, from my understanding, if you're behind deregulation, right, you want, it just, it just goes down to smaller municipalities, right? So like, like it, it should be fine theoretically if you're a deregulation or a libertarian person that like, you mean like states, right? Yeah. Well, I, well, I think city it's rights. a little conflated because like, they're not the same exact thing. Like I'm just saying like if a certain rights. city, if a certain community, a population of people decide, Hey, the thing we want to do, is wear masks here, and the majority wants that to be mandatory, why would the governor of a state make that illegal? Which is what he's saying. He's saying no one can I enact a, uh, a ruling on masks more li more liberal or more conservative than I. It's Pat, just a pissing contest, Pat, basically. no one undermines Governor Kemp. You're not right. getting it. I think it's just and literally his daughter. He's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just saying, like, nobody's going to tell my state they got to wear a mask. Yeah, so and that's then. that's great for the state of Georgia. That's fun stuff. What else is... Yeah. Uh, this is a fun one. What else we got? Uh, oh, here we go. Governor DeSantis, our boy from Florida, has made a decision that gyms in Florida will stay open because uh, people who go to gyms are in good shape, he said. Uh, he also said... Um, Solid this is logic. Yeah, he yeah. said this is Florida, Actually, God kind of makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> it does. But... He said, this is Florida, <laughs> goddammit. We need we need women to be looking good in bikinis here. That's also what he says. <laughs> Tourism. He didn't have to wear masks, at least? No, no probably he not. He didn't say that. No. 
He's yeah. definitely not. He didn't say that last part. He said, if you're in good shape, you have a very, very low likelihood of ending up in significant uh, ending up in significant condition as a result of the coronavirus. That can't be quoted correctly. He's saying you won't get sick. Very yeah. low chance you'll get sick if you're in good shape. Uh, and he said, I don't think it would make sense to close gyms. Um, he didn't specify if Planet Fitness, the gym that doesn't allow grunting, screaming, or slamming weights counts for this. Lunk alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Lunk alarm. I'm a Planet <laughs> Fitness member. Yeah. yeah. Same, Did you ever go? Or do you just do you just spend the $9 <laughs> I, a when, month? When we did our weight loss competition, I was in there a lot. But the thing I liked about Planet Fitness is it's 24 hours, which is very cool. That's and true. And it also has tanning beds. But it if you want to see, there's been times in my life where I've been very fit and worked with personal trainers. And if you want to see some of the worst and most confused people uh, trying to better themselves physically. Planet Fitness. You kick it over to Planet Fitness at about 4 a.m. And you just see people using machines in a way that you never thought uh, that they could. Idiot. Any AM or PM will work at Planet Fitness. <laughs> yeah, anytime. Uh, also, before before you go on, yeah. uh, we're not covering the Chris Wallace um, Trump interview, but he kind of got into into that a little bit. They there was a back and forth. So watch that because he pr he pressed Trump on a lot of things, but it, particularly about the survivability of coronavirus. That was one of the big sticking points of that interview. Was basically Wallace and Trump going back and forth on how survivable it is, and he Trump's more on the DeSantis. Plan. And then Biden, yeah. he, he, he was like, Biden absolutely wants to defund the police. And Wallace was like, I don't know. He's like, get me the paperwork. And then someone like ran and got him the paperwork. Like McEnany was there with the binder. Yeah, it was. They it was spent a pretty part of the interview, interview yeah. looking through being like, ah. Oh, yeah, US okay. is they, like so, they were like US trading is, graphs and shit. It was funny. U.S. is somewhere in the middle on survivability at like ninety nine point something percent. A very they high had percent. they had used but, opposite graphs and but shit. But there was like, there yeah, was some shady was, work going on into that. Sure, like yeah. saying that we were. Um, also, which one I didn't mention because uh, we get our information. You know, we look everywhere for our information, including uh, sometimes the HuffPo, the far left HuffPo. They wrote an article that said eighty five children in Corpus Christi, infants in Corpus Christi, contracted the COVID virus. I saw month. that. Yeah, not so that's good. fucked up. Uh, but we're not going to get into that. Because that's even more depressing. Lastly, if you want to get some groceries after you hit the gym, but you don't want to wear a mask, head on over to Winn Dixie, who is basically the only grocery store chain that is not requiring masks in their stores. They said, We strongly encourage state officials to lead the way in regulating these type of safety mandate mandates. Uh, that was from Joe Caldwell, director of corporate communications at the huh. Southeastern grocery store. And they said, Hey, if if it's not mandated by the you know the state and the city, then uh, Winn Dixie doesn't need you to wear any masks, which is real great for their employees. Yeah, uh, the movie because of Winn Dixie is going to take on a whole different meaning, which is was, why why'd your grandma died? Oh, because of Winn Dixie. Yeah, I will say this. There you go, Pat. I will say this. Uh, regardless of your stance on masks, it will be interesting to see if you actually chose to go to the Winn Dixie when everyone's not wearing masks. No, they'll lose business <laughs> yeah, over yeah. it. Exactly. Like, I saying. just saw a study this uh, that indoors, like so it's gonna be they're saying people. that the aerosols can <laughs> sp can spread like twenty six feet or something. Like if you're if you're gonna go anywhere inside, it certainly makes me feel more comfortable if people are wearing a mask inside because like it's. Yeah. Allegedly, it's, where it spreads the worst. Scientifically, scientifically proven masks help not spread it. Win Dixie's about to see the silent my yeah. majority, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> shopping on their aisles, <laughs> and we'll see. It may be yeah. I'm wrong, but I guess it's going to be like twelve assholes. You we want we want everyone to be safe. What be if safe? it's like Goya and they just are overrun? They, yeah, they it could be. You never land know. Slide records for sale. That's the thing, guys. You never know. Be safe, everyone. That's the COVID update for today. All right, guys, you know what I was thinking America needs? What's Secret that? police. Oh. Okay, go on. You have, you have my interest. Sound well, bad. I'm thinking it's worked in other uh, governments over the years, you know, having police in unmarked vehicles, not identifying themselves, grabbing people off the street. Is we still right? have so, undercover cops everywhere. Is this yeah, like but Zootopia? When an, undercover, when an undercover cop approaches you, he says, hey, I'm an undercover cop. You're under arrest. But not in Portland, mm -hmm. guys. In Portland, as we've covered before, has been a hotbed of protesting as well as Antifa activity. Uh, just the way Portland is. Portland is a very interesting and progressive city. It's a melting pot. Uh, for example, Portland was the city where uh, statues of Thomas Jefferson and George Washington were actually toppled, right? There was a bunch of reports of it. Really, the only place it was happening during the George Floyd protest was Portland. Uh, and yeah, also there were reports of Portland police uh being the victims of violence from protesters as recently as Thursday. Portland, so, wow. basically the Mecca of Antifa. Yes, yes. Right, There's that's lots their of stuff going right? on over yeah. there. I mean, basically. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. a, it's a strange city, progressive, and the yeah, Antifa's there. Anyway, it seems that in response, the president has sent dozens, if not hundreds of federal troops 
uh, who've descended upon Portland, uh, leading to a number of different accounts and videos online that show this officers and people dressed in uh, full military garb in unmarked minivans detaining individuals with no explanation of why they're being arrested and driving off. Oh, so crazy. Getting, yeah, getting out of the car, throwing them in rented minivans. Like the old school, uh, like the, like they're getting yes. inducted into the old school fraternity. Yeah, we'll have them back by dinner. Exactly. It's <laughs> like they're that. definitely not coming back by <laughs> <Yeah>. dinner. <laughs> Except it's America and it's government agents executing this. So uh, not cool, if you ask me. Uh, now, Trump tweeted Sunday morning, we're trying to help Portland not hurt it. Their leadership has for months lost control of the anarchists and agitators, and they are missing in action. We must protect federal property and our people. These were not merely protesters. They are the real deal. Uh, that's what he said. So he's admitting it. It's true. It's happening. A lot of There were a lot of reports of people getting snatched up far from protests, too. People that just kind of looked like Antifa. Look, Antifa are not well, agitators they have a list. or not. They have a list. They, they have, have a list. Yeah, they're probably targeting individuals. Yeah, they have though, like people man. that have protested in the past or whatever, or like, you know. Uh, how embarrassing would it be to get snatched up in a rented minivan? That's that's tough. Yeah, well, it's embarrassed. Yeah, it's embarrassing, embarrassing for our country that your, that's your happening. Head, your head would really be really be spinning with that. Now, so he called in. It's like calling in the National Guard, essentially, but he did it like undercover National Guard. Yeah, it's on. It's on the low. It's on, on the, the low. low. <laughs> okay. <laughs> National Guard on the was low. It, was it a, was it like an autonomous zone area or what, what's I'd seen like some part stuff. of it was well well here's what's happening okay Trump's new campaign situation is not allowing for federal monuments to be defaced and he's calling out liberal leadership as he has in all these cities he's saying liberal leadership is shitty he tweeted on Friday that the the Democrats would be the end of the country as we know it if the Democrats won so what he's doing is he's trying to I guess stand by his word and step in into these liberal cities. And exact. Uh, oh, this is justice. fine. This, this is fine. He's just taking them to like statue uh, training. Like he's just going to make them watch statue reeducation camp. Yeah, statue reeducation re camp. camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Apparently, he's pushing the bounds of what's legal or constitutional. Portland's mayor is not happy, saying the tactics that the Trump administration are using on the streets of Portland uh, are abhorrent, and people are literally being scooped up, scooped up off the streets in unmarked vans, rental cars. Apparently, they are uh, being denied probable cause, and they're being denied due, due process. Uh, they don't even know who's pulling him into the vans. He continued, they, are, they aren't identifying themselves. And as far as I can see, this is completely unconstitutional. Uh, Attorney General for Oregon, um, Alan Rosenblum, sued the Department of Homeland Security and other agencies on Friday over the deployment. And on Sunday, three Democratic chairs of the House Judiciary Oversight and Homeland Security Committees called on the Inspectors General uh, from the Justice Department and Homeland Security to open an immediate investigation into the Trump administration's tactics against protesters in Portland, D.C. and elsewhere. So... We'll see. It's probably not constitutional. It's definitely not cool. Uh, there's just more discourse. That's really what's going on in our country. There's just a ton more discourse. Hopefully this doesn't continue because this is not the tactics that like we're based on, our country's based on. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. As as part of our tour, um, like our vote drive, do you want to take a detour to, to Portland and rent a minivan and scare a bunch of skateboarders? Oh, yeah, absolutely, bro. Uh, is it a right to carry state? I mean, is it open carry state? No. Portland? No, they'll just throw. They'll just like throw, you know, acid or whatever they have at you. Or like, yeah, I don't want food. that. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. People getting moved into unmarked trains and vans, just not. It's not, not good. A, yeah, let's not come together, thing. America. Let's, let's come together. Let's just bring Monday. that. Let's just not do that in 2020. Everywhere in the world. All right. Uh, moving on. Brianna Taylor. Um, so we've covered this before. Former Louisville EMT. Uh, Brianna Taylor, Taylor was wrongfully killed in her um, own bed by Louisville PD when they came into her apartment on a no knock warrant uh, and actually accidentally went into the wrong apartment, her apartment. Um, the officers engaged in a gunfight with Brianna's boyfriend that ended in her death being shot at least uh, five to eight times. It's just different reports. Um the boyfriend's been cleared of the charges that he initially got for striking one of the officers with a bullet in the in the gunfight. Uh, but none of the officers, the three that came in on the no knock warrant, uh, have any charges filed against them. Not only uh, have the involved officers faced no charges, but only one officer was removed from the force over the incident. Um, and obviously that does not sit well with the 10 million people who have signed the petition to bring those three officers to justice. Um, and then the thousands of protesters that continue to uh, just frequent Louisville and other cities all around the country. Uh, so, you know, 
something needs to be done uh, for getting justice here. And maybe something about those two stalled police bills could be done in national Congress, you know, like the Congress is supposed to do. The Dems hit a roadblock because the Senate doesn't want to take it up. The Senate, the the Dems in the House didn't want to take up their original bill. Uh, and yeah, so maybe just do your fucking there? job instead There's, of just instead of just pointing the finger at each other, saying it's not going to get done because the other side is bad. Just how about come together and make it happen? It's just um, been the executive order where Trump cucked like some of the best ideas from the bill, right? That's correct. All and that, he said, bring yeah. me a bill that I'll sign. And then they basically were like, we tried. Mm, we don't like each other's bills. And so they're just crossed armed Senate. Versus so Congress, House. no, no police bills and no new stimulus check. Yeah, they suck. Um, uh, anyways, what's next for the protesters of uh, Breonna Taylor's wrongful death? Uh, a live streamed hunger strike. Uh, from an Airbnb in Louisville, then it's it seems like you know it's just going to be pr- protesters who are moving the protest there uh, to, so that they can avoid getting protesters arrested who are demonstrating uh, for Breonna Taylor, and also uh, so that they can just kind of like you know keep the keep it going that way instead of having to be out in the street with everybody. So it'll just be like four people inside Airbnb doing a hunger strike. It's live streamed. So I read something too, like they didn't even like give her medical attention correct there was a new report that came out that suggested she was alive up to five minutes after she was shot and that the officers were tending to the officer who got hit in the leg right um and making sure that her boyfriend was detained uh instead of helping her survive right for those five minutes i mean you know it's the original report said that she died immediately this is one says she was alive for five minutes i'm not sure if she could have been safe she was shot several times Right. It, it pro- prognosis system wasn't good, but it would have been nice if they, you know, tracked on her. Yeah, you'd think. Uh, so, right. It's just not, you know, even though there's been all this unrest and there's been all this talk about getting stuff done and making changes and all this stuff, really, there's still a lot going on. And, and you know, na- at a national level, they haven't done shit. All right. We're, look, guys, no soapboxing, right? We're, we're going to get we're going to do we're going to do jokes, right? I do want to. Well, okay, here's a joke. Do you think mm-hmm. that live streaming a hunger strike? I've never seen that before. That could help with my weight loss because if live they can do streaming it, a hunger strike, yeah, I can do it. You, do you guys want to do? You guys want to do who can go the longest? Like without those eating? Com- like yeah, like one exactly. Well, you're like going to win that. Like one body. of those competitions where you put your hand on the car and you, whoever has their hand on the car last hands on a hard it. body. Yeah. yeah, remember that documentary? Hands on your belly. Both hands on your belly. Who can do that the longest? I mean, my belly is real furry. I don't know. We, I feel I think like I we have. Go, go ahead. You, yeah. How long could you go? You I think just I could holding go your about, hands on your belly. Uh, no, not holding my hands on my belly. Without eating, I think I could go fifty to sixty hours. Easily. You could definitely. You think you could not eat for fifty easily. to sixty hours? Oh yeah. When we did our last weight loss competition, I was not eating for two days at a time, uh, weekly, forty eight hours straight. Yeah. Yeah, I would say maybe I could do forty eight hours. How long yeah. do you think the 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 I don't know how long. I think a hunger strike is like 119 days or something. Like yeah, that. That's just off right. the top of my head. People have done over 30 days for sure. Yeah. I wonder how long they're going to get in this one. I hope they make it a while. Or maybe they won't have to make it a while because there's going to be some type of change that happens. There needs but, to be justice uh, for Breonna Taylor, no doubt about right. it. Right. All right, guys. For sure. Without a doubt. That is that is true. But what has Russia been up to is what I want to ask you guys. I don't want to know. Right. Because they've kind of <laughs> taken a, they've kind of taken a backseat in the news because China Chinese government's on such a heater. So it's like, hey, do you guys want to take a peek behind the red curtains of Russia? We've been real, uh, you know, resilient to do that or uh, resistant to do that because just they've been uh, floating under the radar. But guess what? Another person fell through a window to their death this weekend in Russia. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. yeah they really third- need to check on those window, the window. Um- Structures in Russia, the locks and the and the panes. You aren't kidding, Pat. Uh, 37-year-old police major Yekaterina Mishkina, I think I nailed that, fell from a fifth floor window in an apartment building to her death in the city of Kaborsk. It's always a government official on a high, like a high enough floor to die. When I just think, yes. well, I mean, it, it, it just must not be like very well made. Yeah. With, like if someone's coming over, your guy, you get new windows at your house. And he's like, hey, I'm thinking about putting these Russian windows in. I'm always, I would be like, hell no, no way, because I don't want to be falling out of them. Yeah, the odds are K- low that they're going to be good, given Kaborsk, these stories. Uh, is 8,000 kilometers east of Moscow, so it's like far east 
Russia. And um, I don't know to answer your question exactly, well, why they're all government officials, but this government official had just testified against her previous boss. Ah. Mm. Yeah, according to several anonymous sources that might want to avoid buildings with multiple floors and windows, uh, Mishkina was a witness in a criminal case against her former boss, who's now retired. Uh, he was ex he was suspected of extortion from his subordinates. So people like Mishkina, like uh, his police subordinates. Mm, um, okay. Yeah, Mishkina's death, by the way, follows at least five incidents of Russian healthcare workers falling from windows. Those are the uh, ones I was talking about. Maybe not yeah. government officials. Yeah. They were like healthcare workers that were probably whistleblowing about the coronavirus and out the window they went. Uh, two journalists also fell out of a window in 2018 and 2019. So their deaths. You got to so, have a, a like a like a two floor max policy if you're a troublemaker over there. Like I don't go over the second floor. You yeah. know what I mean? You <laughs> One just floor, got, Pat. One yeah. floor. Say so, well, yeah. I mean, single second floor, you're not going to die from probably unless the, unless no, you're right you'll your break head. your leg and then they can walk up to you and slip you the, the poison and then put you on the elevator and take you to the ninth floor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even crazier Russian news: between fifteen and fifty thousand protesters took to the street in, I guess, the same fucking area. Really, Kaborsk. A city of 590,000. <laughs> really? That can't be right. Uh, they are protesting against Putin and uh, for the release of their popular regional governor, Sergei Fergal. So big week for Kaborsk. Uh, Fergal is known as the people's governor. For, uh, for, Fergal was arrested and taken to Moscow and is awaiting trial for allegedly arranging for the murder of several of his business associates in 2004 and 2005. So murder and attempted murder for Fergal, who was the sitting governor um, of that area. I, I loved how uh, I, I read this one over the weekend. I loved how the people were like, that was just how it was at the end of the Soviet Union. That's correct, just Will. Yes. <laughs> when, when, when the townspeople were asked about, you know, Fergal committing a bunch of murders, like uh, one lady, Svetlana, said, uh, you know, uh, she told reporters that residents were not put off by the accusations against Fergal because uh, of how Russian politicians handled the end of the Soviet Union. It was riddled with corruption and crime and that the city wants their elected governor returned to them, whether he's a murderer or not. Um, yeah, they, 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 they just has not it. committed Murders yeah. after, multiple, the, after the fall of murders. the Soviet Union. He did what he had to do at the fall of the Soviet Union. We understood that. We we don't care. We want him back. That's like but this, their stance. Yeah, that's their stance. This guy is so loved there because he cut his own salary as soon as he got in office. Then he sold the previous administration's luxury yacht because it was like not needed. And he's also joined with protesters in the streets before to protest. So he's like the people's governor, the people's champ. Um, mm -hmm. Fergal, who is a member of the Liberal Democratic Party, this poor bastard defeated a rival from the ruling United Russia Party that was backed by uh, Vladimir Putin in 2018. And to make matters worse, he didn't want the job. He didn't want to stir up trouble. He knew this would happen if he did. He he actually didn't campaign actively and, and publicly supported his rival because that's what the Kremlin wanted. But the people voted for him anyways. So, oh, he, got, so he, got, he got forced into this job. The poor, he didn't want it. And then, of course, they arrest him for all of his previous deeds and they're going to kill the guy. not do it. And they're going to kill the guy. And now there have been protests for the past two weekends of over 10,000 people to which Kremlin, the Kremlin is not happy because they're anti-Putin protests. The Kremlin spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, called the protest not standard and then said he would be sending in a large team of window repairmen to Kaborsk <laughs> while, while winking at the camera. <laughs> Send them in. Um, so that's Russia's still Russia, guys. Don't worry. Yeah, China's going to China, Russia's going to yep. Russia. Ghislaine yep. Maxwell, guys, is going to Ghislaine Maxwell. So Ghislaine mm -hmm. came out and said, or apparently this is through a, a close source, reportedly she thinks Epstein was murdered. No way. No. It, yeah. She said that Ghislaine Maxwell is now saying Epstein didn't kill himself. Uh, that's not good. Is, yeah, that's not good at all. And she, fear, she fears the same fate. Uh, you don't no say. No shit. A year no in shit, jail. Guys. She's scared she's not going to make it to trial. Yeah. Uh-huh. An unnamed friend told The Sun, everyone's view, in key, including Ghislaine's, is Epstein was murdered. She received death threats before she was arrested. Uh, a federal judge, if you guys remember, denied Ghislaine Maxwell bail on Tuesday and ordered 58, the 58-year-old 58 woman to spend the next year awaiting trial at the Brooklyn Detention Center, where she's been held since right after July 2nd when she got arrested in New Hampshire. It's yeah. been revealed that and Maxwell that and that judge has a new house. Right. Are you are you kidding me? 
Like Are you year. fucking kidding me? Well, but she's going to try to make a deal. In, in, uh, sh- they need to work with her fast, I feel like. Try to you get, think? Try to get- they need to make a movie called Ghislaine Tries to Stay Alive or Ghislaine's <laughs> Year. <laughs> it's like speed of survival. inside a jail cell. It's going to be like the running man. Constant like, assassins coming in. <laughs> yeah, she's gotta have maybe, the beat. Maybe don't wait till the end of that to ask her who what the names are. <laughs> yeah, they might as well snake Pliskin her because it's just not going to work out. Uh, it was revealed Wednesday that Maxwell's brother had had recruited ex British soldiers to protect the socialite as she attempted to hide in New Hampshire because you know he feared for attempts on her life. Uh, she's also being kept in solitary confinement with the lights of her cell on constantly. And the prison she's being held in was once described by a former governor as the most troubled federal facility in the prison system. Uh, I mean, what do you like? Like, yeah, at what it's, point? It's, it, it's the one that they searched the cavities. With the with the word yeah, that deep. we had the quote. Yeah, yeah. But at what point did you like? Did we just give up? We just give up in this country because. What do you mean? Well, she's gonna get killed, Will. She's well, gonna get killed, know and Stop it's being obvious. So pessimistic. The, the beef, the beef, and we know it. The beef, not- the beef. Take it down a notch. You just, you just got this new lease on life with the beef. Come on. Yeah. You're gonna die. You're gonna. Ha- you're gonna perm the back of your hair. You're right. Damn right. The beef. Is. Look at where- the bright side of things, beef. Come on. Yeah. Where else are you gonna go? What other country are you gonna go to and have the beef? Uh, uh, anything in the Eastern Bloc? Uh, also, also the Russian Eastern Bloc. Uh, she's most not dead countries yet. In- in Africa, she's, um, the she's okay. gonna name. She's gonna name the names. I hope she names the names on camera, and then I hope she gets killed afterwards, as long as it's admissible. Because she's a horrible <laughs> human being. Yeah, dude, I'm not. I'm not about Geese Lane's life. I don't care if it goes longer. I just need her to get the names out there first, so we can have justice yeah. for these victims. Maybe, but this maybe, woman's gonna get maybe murdered. She, maybe she already has. Maybe she's already recorded the names on video. They they do say she has like what is that a, a drop case or whatever like a, a whatever that is like so she has something that's supposedly supposed to release if if she does get that's slain. right is that that's what they right call? all all the journalists in the big cities are gonna get that list of names the second she's found dead right <laughs> right That'll or maybe happen. we'll be kept in the dark and uh, we'll be fed another suicide and that's gonna do it for hard factor. Thank you guys so much for listening. It's Monday. That's okay. You're going to get through the week. Okay, the Beave is here with you. Mark is here with you. Will is here with you. We're going to be guiding mm-hmm. you through the week, getting you the news you need to know today. Monday, sometimes a heavy episode. That's just the deal. Just the way it is. Lots of heavy news on Monday. Try to make it light. We also got to give you the info because you're going to work. Yeah. You're going to be at the water cooler. You need to be able to pretend like you know what's going on. And we did Y'all that for you. Y'all are very smart people. We're not going to sugarcoat it for you, right? We, we did right? that for you. Uh, right. The, right, exactly. The, uh, I'm sorry I didn't perm my hair this weekend. This is coming from the beef. I will. It's going to get permed. I got a little bit freaked out because I didn't want to hit a Kenny Powers and I didn't want to hit a Joe Exotic. I want to find my, uh, the, uh, the beef needs to find his own look. So I might bleach my beard. I don't know. But the beef okay. is alive and Hard Factor is alive. Give us a follow if you don't Ooh, mind. Uh, I, go ahead. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt the follow part, but I got an idea. What about, yeah. what about, the downstairs facial hair and then the back yellow. So like the bottoms of the front and the bottoms of the back yellow. Blonde. Like the soles of my shoes. Like I got, right. like, I, like, the, like I'm the walking mustache, on a yellow brick mustache road. Is, mustache is dark <laughs> top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think like I it. like it. I yeah. like it. Hey, the beef likes it a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, just have to give us be- you just have to dip the beaver tail into the oh, into just the dip it. Like, oh yeah, like the Joker falling in that vat of acid, bringing <laughs> right. bringing life. But just to the, the tips, tail. Yeah. just the just tip. the tips, baby, Lance Bass. <laughs> All right, guys, follow us at, at Hard Factor News. My my uh, Twitter is at Hard Factor Pat. My Instagram is at P Classity. Will's is at Hard Factor Will. At Hard Factor Will. Both both platforms. Same for Mark at Hard Factor Mark. Uh, if you haven't, subscribe to this show. Hit subscribe on your Apple Podcasts or follow on the Spotify app, if that's what you're using. Every Wednesday and Friday, we re- re- we will read a five-star review if you leave it on the Apple Podcasts app. No matter what you write in there, we're going to read it. So go and give us a five-star review, and we will read it live on air. We also have a voicemail number. It's 512-270-1480. 270 1480. I'm getting there. The beef's getting there. Yeah. And uh, we're, getting, most... we're also getting there on the on the download numbers. You guys keep spreading the word. We're getting close. Yeah. We yeah. We we're really enjoying this, guys. We got to get a little bit north of where we are right now to, to get mm-hmm. that full time contract. So keep, keep spreading please, spreading the hard factor word. Most importantly, have a great fucking day. <laughs>